Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, guys, we have a lot to dive into. There is a significant amount of analysis that we're going to be doing here in today's stream. I hope you guys do enjoy. We might even have a guest join us here in a little bit over on Discord. So, guys, we have a lot to get into. This is Coffee and Crypto. This is our morning live stream that we normally do over in the first cohort. But as you guys know, it is becoming tradition to do one of these live streams to the general public so you guys can see what you're missing the other four days of the week. Let me go ahead and mute my headphones real quick. I am a professional YouTuber, guys. Apologies for that. Anyway, like I was saying, this is Coffee and Crypto. This is our morning live stream that we normally reserve for the first cohort. If you guys want to join us, the link is down below to get these live streams four more times a week. Let's go ahead and check out what's is going on in chat. There's already a bunch of you guys in here. Already 60 people. Guys, we just joined. Hello, XRP Florida, Fritis, Vi uh, Vincent, MGTOW, Mattis, Google Review. Hi, Google Review. You guys still owe me a 10.99. Um, T. Clampson, yes, indeed. We are live. Good to see you, brother. Super Civilian, Dennis, John, Anthony, T. Uh, T.Y. Khan, Vincent again, Porza. Let's see if I can give all of you. Dennis, Google Review again, Randall, Bass, Anson, Carlos, Baz, Anthony. Guys, you guys are making me feeling so loved. How are y'all doing? I hope you're all having a wonderful, wonderful morning. Like I said, guys, this is Coffee and Crypto, and it wouldn't be Coffee and Crypto without one of my favorite coffee mugs right there. It says Pura Vida on it, as you can see. I don't know if you can read that. Pura Vida. Yeah, I don't have any idea what that means. I think it means pure life. Mm. Google Review, thank you for your content. Well, thank you, Google, for providing YouTube where I'm able to put this content out. Har, 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 har. I'm hilarious, I know. Kelvin, woohoo, Jeb Live. Why do I take financial advice from a 19-year-old? You don't. You do not take financial advice from me because I do not provide financial advice. There's your answer. Morning, Tim. Morning, Muhammad. Morning, uh, just a tad 89. That's a cool name. Hi from the United Arab Emirates. Hello, Muhammad. Hello, questions and answers. Hola, amigo. Como esta? Did you guys know that Pablo Picasso's full name is Pablo Diego José Francisco de Paulo Juan de Pomocena Maria de los Rinos Sebrano de los Santísimo Trinidad Ruiz y Picasso? Did you know that? That's Pablo Picasso's full name, guys. Someone said something in Spanish, so I had to go share that with you. Like I said, guys, for all of you who are just joining, we're going to jump on into some analysis here in today's video, in today's live stream. Might even have an interview later on. I have one of our students over in the first cohort. And we're going to have him come on here in just a little while. He is actually writing a book on cryptocurrencies. It's the first time ever going to bring someone on the channel. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, we're going to be talking with him here in just a minute. Um, if you're in the chat, if you're uh, if you're watching, uh, so, um, then go ahead and let me know you're in the chat. I said kidding, Jeb. Oh, I don't know what you said originally. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi. Hey, guys. You're showing off now. I am most certainly showing off. It took me a while to remember his full name, which is, once again, Pablo Di I'm kidding. I'm not going to do it again. Say it all back. <laughs> no. 11K this week. That is very possible. That is very possible. Good morning, Arman. Good morning, everybody. Like I said, we'll say this for the people that just joined. This is Coffee and Crypto. This is a show that is normally reserved for those members of the first cohort who have joined with the link in the description down below. So if you want access to this live stream every single morning where we're going to give updates and trade ideas and everything, then I recommend you join us. G4L Jack, welcome to the stream. Glad to see you live. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One second, guys. All right. I'm watching. Hey, Alexa. John, Jeb, your new content is awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. That comment is awesome. I appreciate that. Where are you from, Jeb? I was born in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and I currently live in Florida. We'll be going back up to Gatlinburg relatively soon after this CT2A update is done. Guys, I worked about 14 hours yesterday, and I am so happy about it. Anthony P., you said you're thinking about getting the course. Here's what you can do. There's going to be one more sale at $159 before the price increases. The price is going to be increasing because there are hundreds, and I mean hundreds, of man hours going into this course update. Taylor spent like four or five hours editing the TradingView video yesterday. I haven't even gotten to see it yet, but it looks, it sounds like it's going to be amazing. Um... Hey, Sean. Hey, Jeb. This is my first cohort. This is my first first cohort live. You're awesome, man. Thank you so much, guys. You're just showering me in praise, and I really appreciate it. You know, I say this all the time, but I want to say it again. Just how thankful I am for you guys. Like, I know I make, I know I sit down and make the videos every morning, but it's not. I never feel like I'm working when I'm making a video. It always feels like I'm having fun and enjoying myself, and it feels like I'm talking to you guys one on one, even though I'm the only person in the room. It's um. 
Uh, yes, Demonk, for the course, absolutely. Two of those videos are now up, or excuse me, two of those videos are now produced. They will be going up along with three more, one of which will be made today on uh, probably Saturday, but maybe, fr maybe Friday. Oh, guys. Yep, and guys, there is a lot. You got you. You probably saw the uh, the little comedy segment that we had at the beginning of yesterday's video of me on the phone. I mean, just chucking my phone. That's a Google Pixel Three XL, by the way. I'm surprised it didn't break, but um, I take that back. This camera, this phone is amazing. But I was talking about uh, starting the new YouTube channel. So, guys, there is a new channel coming out. Nothing's going to be changing on Bic on this channel except more content. This channel is going to keep growing and growing and growing, getting better and better and better. But I'm about to drop tens of thousands of dollars in camera equipment for a new YouTube channel. Guys, I am pumped. Just got a new microphone. This is called a, 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 a Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. I love this microphone. This is going to be helping out. I'm probably going to be buying a C200 for any of those camera nerds out there. Going to be getting some office space. Guys, we are about to blow up and make that new YouTube channel and continue working on this one. I'm really excited. All right, guys. So... We have some analysis that we have to do in today's video, and we have an interview that we're going to be doing in today's video. So give me a one if you want the analysis first, and two if you want the interview first. We're going to be bringing on a friend of ours over on Discord, Solrak, who has a very a very interesting past with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. I don't know how much he's going to want to say on screen, so I'm not going to force him to say anything. But of course, I want to let him um, um, I want to let him on the stream because he has a very interesting story, like I said. Um, what do you think about 4,000 bit, uh, Jeff, what do you think about the 4,000 BTCs next week? Do you have some information for the community? Please read, bro. Are you talking about the, uh, whoa, man, just realized you're at 31.4K subs. You came a long way since I followed. Yeah, Nanette, yeah, yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. you're an old name. You've been here since the beginning, my friend. Yeah, we've got a lot of stuff going on. So like I said, give me a one if you want. Um, crap, I forgot. Okay, everybody says one. Was one, I am... Wow, I am so oblivious. Everybody's saying one. I don't remember what one was for. Was that for technical analysis or for the interview? I think that was for the interview. Help me out here, guys. I'm a, I'm a klutz. I completely forgot. I'm, wow. Keep the blues. Okay, we can change it to green. You know. Nah, let's not do that. Um. Hey, Sage. The Crypto Jeb Show, yeah. Coffee and crypto. I am completely oblivious. Miner Huck just donated $10 to say, get the course. Seriously, Jeb is sincere and genuine compared to the others. Thank you so much, Miner Huck. I really appreciate that. I really do. I appreciate the $10 and also appreciate the kind words. Analysis is first. All right, guys. Well, the community has spoken. We shall do the analysis first. Solrak is watching the stream, so he knows what's going on. Let's go ahead and dive on into that. Gotcha. Thank you, guys. I understand. I understand. Okay. Gotcha. We got it. God, chat's blowing up. Thank you for the support, guys. I really do appreciate that. Let's go ahead and do this now, though. Let's see. Are we correct? We are correct. I'm going to go ahead and get chat out of here because I'm going to get very distracted. That's a good call. Yeah, do the TA first, and then the interview won't be hurried. Cool. So, guys, there's a lot that I want to talk about in this live stream. A lot of what we're going to talk about in this live stream is also in today's video, but there's a lot of content in today's video other than what we're going to be discussing in this live stream, so make sure you watch today's video as well. I think you guys are going to really, really enjoy it. One of the first things I want to talk about here on Bitcoin is the alignment of the moving averages, and currently, I only have two moving averages up. I have the 50 and the 200. You guys will probably know the term golden and death crosses, especially for those of you guys who are in the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. That, a golden cross, is what happens when a 50 moving average or a short-term moving average, it crosses above the 200 moving average or a longer-term moving average. So you can have the 200, or excuse me, you can have the 20 cross above the 200, et cetera, et cetera. In this case, we're looking at the 50 crossing the 200. This is a big deal. We're about to see this happen. If we extract, oh, excuse me, guys, I got the coffee burps. If we extrapolate out these moving averages, then we're more than likely going to see, especially since Bitcoin's still trending to the upside, a golden cross on around the, the, around the 18th to the 20th of February. That is a really big deal. Let me stress here, guys. That is a huge deal, okay? Bitcoin having a golden cross is a major deal. Let me show you why. Okay, it, you, a lot of you guys probably already know why, but let me show you for those of you who may not understand um, immediately why that's so important. 
I want to show you where all of the crosses were in history. And I'll be brief on this because I know a lot of you guys already know about golden death crosses. Last time we had a death cross, which was a short-term moving average crossing below a long-term moving average, was right here in October. It signaled downtrend. The last death cross we had before that was right here. It signaled the 2018 bear market. The last golden cross that we had was right here at the beginning of this 2019 bull market that we saw that lasted about six or seven months and rallying 300%. Okay, this was definitely a bull market. Bitcoin definitely was in bullish territory here, and this golden cross was a part of that. So this is the most recent golden cross. It was nearly a year ago that the last one happened. It was in April of last year. So if we look back even farther, what we're going to see is that the last golden cross before that, the last golden cross before that was back over here on the 27th of October, 2015. Okay, 2015. There was one about a year ago, and the last time was right back over here in 2015. That is significant. Tell me I'm wrong on that. Okay, there there were a couple of moving averages uh, crosses here, and there were a couple of moving average crosses here that weren't relevant. There was two death crosses, one there and one there. Excuse me, those are two uh, that those are two golden crosses. One golden cross, one golden cross, one gold uh, one death cross, and one death cross. There were four fake crosses, but pretty much every single time these moving averages cross each other, it is very significant. We saw the last golden cross in history that was actually important was back over here, right there on the fourth of February in 2020. Okay, these do not happen very often. I'm getting in the habit of saying, okay, I need to, I'm, I'm starting to sound like Ben Shapiro or something. I need to stop saying, okay, so much. Anyway, um, we're about to see that golden cross. And yes, that is looking like it's going to line up with some time around that Marshall, the U.S. Marshall's auction. But I'll tell you something, guys, the, the overall technical landscape of Bitcoin right now is so much more bullish than just a 4,000 Bitcoin sell order. I don't, I mean, they're auctioning it off, which is technically, um, that's technically uh, like an over-the-counter market trade, and at the same time, um, at the same time, that's not necessarily meaning that it's going to be sold on exchange. And if it is, it's not necessarily mean it's all going to be sold at the exact same time. So don't get too freaked out over four thousand Bitcoin. Four thousand Bitcoin sounds like a lot, but if we bring up a calculator here, let me just type in calculator, calculator. Then we type in four thousand times Bitcoin's price right now, which is at the time when this auction happens, it'll probably be around ten thousand five hundred dollars or so. We're looking at $42 million worth of Bitcoin. That sounds like a big number, right? And it's really not. You might be able to break through the sell wall, or excuse me, you might be able to break through the buy wall on one exchange, whatever it's being sold on, but it's probably not going to cause anything major. And like a lot of people just said, it's off the books also. It's, re it's, really just, it's really just not that big of a deal. It's really just not going to cause as big of a problem as a lot of people think it is. 300 viewers already. Good to see you guys. I hope you're all doing well. Before we continue, there are a lot more things that I want to get into. We're going to have a great stream today, guys. I have a lot of analysis to dive into. Before I go, uh, before I continue going, though, however, I do first want to mention, like I said, this is Coffee and Crypto. This is not a normal live stream. These are live streams that are normally reserved for our members of the first cohort. That is our community linked down below. If you want to join us, you can check out down below. If you're already in CT2A, you'll get a full $25 Bitcoin rebate when you join, which will pay for your month's subscription fee. You can cancel at any time. And heck, if you guys really don't like first cohort for some reason i will give you all your money back we have a great community going over there i would love to see you guys in the morning live streams every single day rather than just here on the days that we launch this to the public so guys the link for that is down below anyway let's get back into this i do want to read chat here for just a second um 4, bitcoin on auction no one cares if he says okay lol don't sweat the small stuff <clears throat> every rich person is way too greedy to sell like that yeah i really just don't see um, thank you, Moni. Okay, yeah, you're welcome. I'm not sure what you're thanking me for, but you're welcome. <laughs> People should not expect Bitcoin to keep pumping to the moon. You're right. I do think that um, I do think that Bitcoin is going to need some kind of correction lately, uh, pretty soon. And that's something I've been saying for quite a while here, guys, is that Bitcoin has been in a bull market and Bitcoin is in a bull market and Bitcoin is probably going back to the yearly high, or excuse me, back to last year's high, the local high before $20,000. We're probably going back there. We're probably, I mean, at this rate, guys, considering the halvings coming up, I think we're moving into a bull cycle that will result in a $20,000 Bitcoin again. The problem I'm having is, uh, twofold. One one short term problem and one longer term problem. The shorter term problem is that Bitcoin needs a pullback. Okay, we I did it again. We've been rallying for uh, like over fifty days, nearly sixty days here. I don't have the chart up, I know, but let me just check. Uh, yeah, Bitcoin has been rallying for fifty five days. We're up sixty one percent. That's great, 
But at the same time, we need Bitcoin to have some kind of correction, some kind of lock in of the gains. If I show you the 20 EMA, let me show you the chart first. If I show you the 20 EMA, that's going to show that we have support right here around $9,400. Now, one of the problems I'm also seeing is that this 20 EMA is a very important level of support for Bitcoin to hold, and it's rallying very, very quickly. I wish this 20 EMA was down here like 9,000, because what I want to do is I want to see Bitcoin come down and test that 20 EMA and bounce off of it just like we did right here. Lock in some of those gains, guys. Lock in some of those gains. Let the bears have their day. Let people take profits. Let everybody who wants to get out of the market get out of the market. Then Bitcoin bounces off support. That's what I want to see happen. I don't know if it's going to happen, but that's what I want to see happen. Because at this rate, if Bitcoin just keeps mooning, eventually it's going to need a pullback and there's going to be a problem built from that. If you don't believe me, go back to the live stream that we did back here on the 27th of July. Actually, it was the 26th of June, right here, when people were asking me, hey, Jeb, should I buy into the market? Should I, jump, should I buy into the market? No. No, you shouldn't, because an eight-month bear market followed. Of course, you didn't know that at the time, but I was cautioning people about getting in up here because Bitcoin was overextended. I'm not really saying that Bitcoin's overextended right now. I'm saying that we want to be careful about getting overextended. To clarify, I don't think we're massively overextended right now, but I don't want us to get there. And the second problem that I see that I see is that there's not a lot of retail and institutional interest in the space right now. Ice doesn't have a whole lot of a, a whole lot of contracts on it. If we go ahead and grab Ice, where is it? Right here. If we go ahead and grab ICE, you can see, I'll have to go to full screen, um, right here, we have 642 contracts. That's actually up from this morning, so that's doing well. But this used to have 3,000 contracts. What happened? I'll tell you what happened. Bitcoin continued the bear market and people lost interest in backed. I want to see more institutional and retail volume coming into the space. That's what we need. That's what I want to see. That's what Bitcoin needs to sustain a market like this. So I did just miss a donation, so let me go back and read that. Uh, Jan donated 5 uh, euro. Thank you, Jeff, for the 4,000 Bitcoin comment. Absolutely, dude. I appreciate the donation, and I appreciate the thanks, although you didn't have to do that. Um, that is really cool of you, so thank you very much. Yeah, like I said, I just don't see the 4,000 Bitcoin thing being a real issue. A lot of people get freaked out over news, but honestly, some of the news that people, that, that people just talk about a bunch, it's not as important as people make it out to be. 4,000 Bitcoin, it sounds like a lot. Guys, there's like, what, over 18 million Bitcoin in circulation now? And, I, and, I, and yes, I realize for all of you nitpickers that some of that has been um, lost. There is a lot of Bitcoin in circulation. There is a lot of trading volume. We're talking billions of dollars a day. If they sold all of that Bitcoin at the exact same time on one exchange, it probably still wouldn't cause a major move in the market. People are freaking out over it. And it's just, I'll tell you the reason that people are freaking out over it. I will tell you exactly why people are freaking out over it. Because there's no real news going on in this space right now. There's not a whole lot interesting to talk about. So everybody's just, okay, well, this is a story we can make, we can talk about. That's why I try and stick to the technicals as much as possible. Unless there's a really important, um, unless there's a really important, uh, uh, unless there's a really important news story. Comedy Man Crypto donated $2 and said, Jeb, parody Ben Shapiro, love, hate segment. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't. I haven't seen anything by Ben Shapiro in a long time, so I don't even know what to quote him as, as, as joking. Yeah, someone also mentioned the $300 billion market capitalization on Bitcoin. Let's look at this. Excuse me, not on Bitcoin, on uh, the crypto markets. We did just pass $300 billion on market cap. This is very important. Let me go ahead and show you the screen. You guys can't see that, can you? Um, we're looking at $300 billion on market cap. I remember when market cap was at $820 billion a little over two years ago when Bitcoin hit all-time high. So yes, Bitcoin needs a pullback. Yes, there are problems in the long term. Yes, at the same time, the technicals are looking great. But also, one thing you need to remember is, guys, got, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen closely now. Okay, listen to me. This is important. The technical analysis and the fundamental analysis is great, but what is the underlying space look like, looking like? In 2017, with all of the developments that hadn't happened yet, YouTube developing, I mean, the, the, this community that we have here, none, a lot of this stuff didn't exist back then. I remember. I was one of the first people to do videos of this kind. Um, and then a little while later, Carl came in and, 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 and uh, surpassed me. But um, I, re I remember when I had more subscribers than Carl. I remember that. Great guy, by the way. Anyway, I'm way off topic. The point is, is that the regulatory landscape, the fundamentals, the development, Lightning Network, the technicals, the adoption, the awareness, the YouTube space, everything is more bullish now. The stock to flow ratio, the halvings coming up, everything looks better now than it did back in 2017. And we ran to $20,000 twice where we are right now. Bitcoin is undervalued is my point. You can also argue that and say that, oh, well, Bitcoin was massively overvalued in 20, in 2017. But what's to say we can't go there again? I'm not saying we're not going, I'm not going, I'm not saying we're going to go to a million dollars tomorrow. Okay. If, if we get a thousand likes, we might, but I'm not saying that. 
I am saying that Bitcoin can very easily go back to all-time high, and I definitely think it's going to. Let me catch up on chat just a little bit. 835 billion. Okay, yeah, was, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, Jerome just released a statement that that crypto threat to the U.S. dollar. Send me a link to that on Discord. I wish I was that smart in 19 or even 25. Well, thank you, Dennis. You're, you're, you flatter me. You flatter me. Jeb is the Shapiro of crypto. <laughs> Ah, well, actually, gender is not a social construct. <laughs> Remember, most institutional types trade happen off the book right now, especially with KYC. You're absolutely right, yeah. That's why I want to see the institutions not just investing in the actual crypto market itself, but also investing in on-ramps for retail investment. Um, something people are not taking into consideration is that the person who buys might not sell it off or might just decide to sell a bit. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying is that we don't even know that they're going to sell the Bitcoin. Frankly, if I were to get 4,000 Bitcoin at auction, I probably would not, um, I probably would hold on to it, to be honest with you, or at least at least a lot of it. Because like, what do you need What do you need $42 million for? Maybe the guy who buys is rich, and he probably is if he's buying 4,000 Bitcoin, whoever does it, but it's probably not even going to be the same person. It's probably going to be auctioned off to multiple people. I don't know if they're doing it that way or not. Jeb, what do you think? How much Bitcoin do I need to be a millionaire in the future? Shoot for as much as you possibly can because you never know where Bitcoin's going to go. If you want to be a millionaire in the future, it's going to take more than just... Well, it's not necessarily going to take more than just investing in Bitcoin, but know that the average mil millionaire has many streams of income. I currently have three. I have three. Yeah, I have three current streams of income. Uh, the first cohort, the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. Well, four. I take that back. No, five. Yeah, of course. What am I thinking? I was thinking of business, but also investments. I have ad revenue, first cohort, CT2A, investing, and trading. That's five streams of revenue. Your average person has one because they don't invest, they don't trade, and they work a W-2 job. So, well, also technically I'm paid by my own company, so six, I guess. But the average millionaire has many streams of income. So understand that if you want to become a millionaire, it's not as simple as just dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin. You might, I mean, you might become a millionaire, but you're not going to be able to sustain it because you don't have the wisdom and the expertise and the knowledge and the, and the experience and everything to maintain that and to build it. If you want to become a millionaire... Start a business around cryptocurrency. Start teaching people to trade cryptocurrency. Start trading cryptocurrency with massive amounts of volume. Maybe start a fund like some of the people that, I that I've talked to are doing. Bitcoin has more genders than a student at Berkeley. Ooh, I'll drink to that. <laughs> oh my gosh. I have three. None are crypto yet. Hey, Robert. Hey, Robert. Old name. How you doing? Morning, Jeb. What time do these live streams start every morning? So these live streams start at around 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. every morning Eastern Standard Time. I try and get them to start around 9, but I waited to, to start around 10 so that Solrak, uh, Solrak could join us. Let's see. Guys, I, by the way, I just want to take a second here. I know I said it earlier, but I, I really just want to say this again about how thankful I am that you guys are here and with us and that there's 360 people here. I can't believe that. I remember, I've told this story on stream many times, but I'm going to briefly tell it again. I remember when we first started this YouTube channel and I had five subscribers the night before and I was sitting on a bench at Santa Fe outside Barnes & Noble Santa Fe because I was a cashier there at the time and I was looking at my phone. I was 17 years old. I was looking at my phone in, um, if my fingerprint will work, I was looking at my phone in, in YouTube Studio. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not. But on YouTube Studio, you see right there where it says the subscriber count? Can you guys see that? The subscriber count? It said five subscribers. And then, like, the next morning, there were seven. And I was freaking out. I was like, dude, we got two subscribers overnight. Because I have done YouTube channels before, and the biggest channel I ever had was 42 subscribers. It was the, kind of a funny number, if you guys get that reference. But... Um, yes, by the way, I, I am Clark Kent. Yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, have you ever seen me and Superman in the same room together? I don't think you have. Anyway, point is, um, geez. Point, let me, I'm going to answer that here in just a second. Good Lord. But uh, <laughs> what I was going to say is that having two new subscribers overnight was unprecedented for me. So the fact there's 350 of you guys, just thank you, seriously. And thank you for that, the Crypto Wild. You donated $50 in, geez, in 2014, venture capitalist Tim Draper purchased 30,000 Bitcoin at auction. He still owns each and every single one. There's a great chance that these will go to a, uh, that these will go to a hodl as well. Perhaps Mr. Draper. That's a very good point. That's what I was saying. Is that one? Those 4,000 Bitcoin that are being sold, they're probably not all going to be 
excuse me, those 4,000 Bitcoin that are being auctioned, they're probably not all going to be sold immediately. They might go to multiple different people, and a lot of people are probably going to hodl them. I know I would if I had any understanding of the technical landscape, which I do. People buying that much Bitcoin know what they're doing. If they, w if they didn't know what they were doing, they probably, probably, keyword probably, wouldn't be spending that much money on it. 42.0 subs. Yeah, it was the answer to the Life Universe and everything. <laughs> Talking Moose said, thanks for the info. I was looking uh, for info on getting the first month free for the cohort. Otherwise, I'd like to join soon. So talk to, the, uh, talk to me, Moose. I'm sorry. If you're in CT2A, the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy, you will get a free first month for the first cohort. The way you do that is you join the first cohort with your credit card so that we can set up the subscription. And then you shoot me an email on Discord because it's a Discord server, so you can get in contact with me there. And you say, hey, Jeb, I just joined and I'm in CT2A. I'll go check, make sure everything's squared away. And then I'll ask for your Bitcoin address and I'll send you $25 in Bitcoin to pay for that first month. And the reason we do that is so that we can get the payment set up um, so that we can go ahead and continue. And uh, we just go ahead and refund it to you in Bitcoin. So there you go. If you're in CT2A, then that's how we do it. Jeb, FFS, pr have prices gone up for the course? Not yet. There is going to be one more... Um, there is going to be one more... Um, one more sale. It's going to be the Valentine's Day sale. It starts on Friday. I normally don't tell you guys that a sale is coming up, but I'm going to today because I want you guys to be aware of it because that's the last time you're ever going to get CT2A for $159 because the price is going to be going up as we keep adding more content. And yes, indeed, 42 is the answer to the life universe and everything. Red Bull Sun, how many Bitcoins do I need to get some damn respect around here? 50. <laughs> Hey, Jeb, a pullback isn't out of the question, right? We're kind of oversold. I think you mean we're kind of overbought. We need a correction for a healthy trip to the moon. Yes, that's what I've been telling people is we need a healthy correction. I want to see Bitcoin pull back to $9,500 around the 20 EMA. I want to see that happen. I'll drink to that. Come on now. David's got me. Said TA, please. We're going to do that. Let me read one more comment. Jeb is only 19. By the time he's 25, he's going to be a crypto millionaire and absolute lady killer. Let the facial hair grow a little new haircut, contact lenses. Oh, come on. You don't like my square glasses? Come on, man. Look like Jimmy Neutron. Anyway, let's get back up onto the sale. The sale? The sale. Yeah, sure. Let's get back up onto the sale, guys. Let's get back up on the saddle is what I was trying to say. Let's get back up on the analysis. Guys, let me show you something else that I have been looking at. That would be the RSI. As we can see down here, the RSI is sitting up around 70-ish right now on the daily chart. I want to show you this because there is something I've been saying, and that is that the RSI is overbought and we need a pullback. I'm not backtracking on that. That is a very true statement. At the same time, though, I want to direct your attention to these rallies over here. When Bitcoin was rallying, it would very... I don't know what my chart just did. When Bitcoin would go into these rallies over here, we would have big old spikes on the RSI on these three rallies. If you break this market down, we actually had three major rallies, and you can see those three major rallies on the RSI right over here. We, even though we could use a healthy correction right now, definitely have enough fuel in the tank to have one of these pop-off tops like this. That is definitely in the cards. And we saw the RSI go up to like 85, 90 over here. There's nothing saying that that can't happen. I want to make that very clear because when I say we need a pullback, that doesn't mean that we're definitely going to have a pullback. But at the same time, that doesn't definitely mean we're going to blow the top off and go straight to the moon. I want you guys to be aware of that because a lot of people are thinking, oh, Jeb, so there's going to be a pullback. Bitcoin obviously can't rally above $10,300. Wrong. Very wrong. Bitcoin can. Bitcoin can be at $12,000 in a few days. I've seen it happen. So have you. It happens, and it'll happen fast. This RSI is proving it. RSI is sitting up here at 70, and one of the things you have to understand about RSI, we talk about this in the C in CT2A, is that RSI being above 60 or 70 for a, con for a significant amount of time is not actually necessarily a bearish thing. Sometimes it's a short-term bearish technical saying we need a pullback for a few days. But if we're staying up above the 50 level for an extended period of time, as we are right now, we've been up here for the entire year above 50 and 60, that's indicative that you're in a bull market. Guys, when we talk about bull markets and bear markets, there are different ways that you define each of these. A bull market is defined by the alignment of the moving averages. It's defined by the way that uh, the moving average crosses happen. It's defined by the RSI. It's defined by the trend of higher highs and higher lows. It's defined by the weekly chart. It's defined by a lot of different things. And one of the th one of the things that you can use to help define a bull or a bear market is what is the RSI doing? In this case, the RSI is sitting up here above 60 and 70. For a significant amount of time, not having a pullback, we're not going down to 30, which means that we are in bull market territory. Look at this. When we were in this bull market right over here, did Bitcoin go below the 50 level? Like barely at all. No, it barely went below the 50 level this entire time that we were in this bull market. From like February all the way through July, we barely went below that. But after the bear market started, let's say here in August, in August, all the way down here, did Bitcoin really go above the 50 level? Not a whole lot at all. We basically just stayed down here below the 50 level. That is what's important. 
where is the Bitcoin RSI? It's sitting above 50 on the daily chart. That is very important. Okay, so I do see that a rally can happen, but I want to see a bit of a correction. I do want to see the I do want to see the RSI cool off a little bit because I'll tell you, RSI is looking great. Everything I just said is completely right. But if we look at the RSI here, we do have an uptrend that we need to watch out because if that uptrend breaks, then it's probably going to result in a little bit more bearishness. And you know, even though we're in a bull market and even though we have confirmed it and everything, and we're far away from the 200 um, exp uh, simple moving average, everything's looking healthy. I do still want to see. Um, Bitcoin fall below that uptrend in a healthy way because eventually it's going to. There is no argument to be made that Bitcoin will not fall below this uptrend. Bitcoin, I mean, this uptrend will have Bitcoin above 70 on the RSI for longer than it ever has been halfway through March. So sometime this month, we're going to break this. I'm just curious to see when and how exactly we're going to break it. It's going to happen in the next month and it's going to result in the pullback. You can mark my words. Anyway, let's go ahead and look at chat here. We'll continue with the technical analysis, but I want to catch up on chat here just for a little bit. Um, let's see. Someone asked if there's a pullback down to the CME gaps. I know that comment was deleted. Thank you for the, for the, for policing that G4L, but I am going to go ahead and answer that question because guys, I've heard a lot of people talking about, um, gaps and frankly, I don't really see a whole lot of them. I, I mean, there's some gaps down here. There's like, the, okay, look, I realize there's a gap right here. Technically speaking, that's a gap. Technically speaking, this might be a gap. I see the gaps guys. I do. I see them. Believe me. I understand. Let's get our let's get our um, our horse, our cross out here so we can actually see this. The gap right there. The tiny little gap right there. Tiny little gap right there. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. They're not going to get filled. Okay? They're not going to get filled. I don't think. I don't see a reason for Bitcoin to go back down to these levels anytime soon. Right now, Bitcoin is looking very healthy. I don't understand why Bitcoin would need to go back down to $6,400 for a gap that is like $2 tall. They're not big gaps. If it was like a $1,000 gap, then maybe. But, you know, it's not a gap that is very important. And frankly, everybody publicizing it and talking about it is just spreading FUD, which might actually become a self-fulfilling prophecy. I don't think that's going to happen, but it's just not worth talking about, which is why I haven't made a video on it. Anyway, let's go ahead and get back over to... That's not what I wanted. <laughs> let's get back over to the chat. There it is. Common Man Crypto donated another $2, said 4,000 Bitcoin is bad if liquidity is low during mania. You're right, but lately the liquidity in Bitcoin has been very high. The volume's been very high. If you look at the open interest charts, for example, you can see that open interest on Bitcoin has been over a billion dollars for a significant amount of time here, as you can see right there. Volume on Bitcoin, it's not like, I mean, we're not having a moonshot of volume or anything, but it is generally seeming to trend to the upside. We're seeing a lot of volatility come back into the space. I don't think it's going to be a problem, to be honest with you. Let's see, uh, 400 viewers. Goodness gracious, guys. Let's moon those likes. Thank you so much. There's a gap around $450. It, I don't think that's true. Um, hey, hey, Jeb, great coffee talk. What are your thoughts on a potential correction of Bitcoin between now and Monday? God, I, don't know exactly I don't know exactly when it's going to happen. I'm going to put it this way. I don't know exactly when the pullback's going to happen. Maybe around uh, $10,480. That would be the high up here. Right there. I could see something like that happening. Bitcoin pulling back with roughly the high that it has right now. We're, we're testing very strong resistance. Um, and, uh, rallying until Monday is possible. Um, um, MS1904 that we're adding more like right now, actually. <laughs> but I, I think a pullback is coming. I don't know exactly when it's going to happen. It's hard to tell you because they just keep showing bullish technicals. But... I'm going to keep you guys on the fence for that right now. I don't want to say anything without a lot of certainty behind it. Um, how do you think the golden cross that looks like is going to happen with the 50 MA converging on the 200 MA by the look of it in the next few days will affect the price action? Tom O'Sullivan, we talked about that at the beginning of the live stream. I think it is a huge deal. I think it's a huge deal. This is a 20 uh, moving average of volume. Let me change it to the 50 for you. Uh, yeah, the 50 is just showing it pretty flat. But yeah, it's the 20. Um, Ernest, uh, you can send it to me on Discord. Um, let's see here. Day trader accumulate Bitcoin. Yes. Let's go back to full screen here for just a second. Um, Jeb wanted 8,500. Yeah, I just saw that. I don't, I don't really see it as a problem. I don't really see it as a problem, to be honest with you. Hmm. How can I miss coffee and crypto? Roxid making a cameo. You were in a video the other day, weren't you, my friend? Good analogy. I'm going to steal that from you. <laughs> Hopefully you don't mind. What's your correction target? My correction target will be the 20 EMA. That's sitting around 9.5 right now. As you can see, I, I would like to see Bitcoin pull back and test this 
I don't know when it's going to do it. It's hard to tell right now because Bitcoin's looking very bullish. It's one of those things where the technicals look very bullish, but the sentiment and just my gut feeling is disagreeing with it. And I've gotten to the point where normally if my gut is telling me something, it's telling me for a reason and I ought to listen to it. Um, I thought he was my age until I saw his baby face. <laughs> Jeb is a genius. Create your own token. You're 19 years old and smart like Bill. Get quit. Stop. Um, what do you think about the ascending pennant forming? Should it have... Should be an, uh, should be upbreaking in your opinion. Yeah, that's what that's another thing I was talking about. Is that I'll show you guys that in just a second. Summit bore most cryptocurrency most altcoins have retraced more than uh, Bitcoin has just because when cryptocurrencies go into into retracements, people generally put their money safely in Bitcoin. People like they stop investing in all these altcoins. They put it in Bitcoin for safety. Life advice, Jeb. Stay single during the next Bitcoin run. Do not let women get inside your head and steal your attention. I missed the 2017 bull market because of this. You have an opinion on OpticalArt.com channel and his TA. OpticalArt.com originally was posting his uh, technical analysis in my comments section, and people loved it. I don't actually watch his videos, to be honest with you, because frankly, it's just... It's not my style of TA. If he, I don't know if he has a lot of success with that or not, but if he does, then good for him. Jeb, the 2050, 200, and 100 are lining up nicely. You're absolutely right. That is why they're up on the screen right now, as you can see right there. We have the 100 closed because I was showing you guys a moving average cross a second ago. But yeah, we have all four of them up right now because they are lining up very, very beautifully. Looks great. By the way, guys, like I said, like I said, this is the Coffee and Crypto Show. This is what normally happens in the first cohort every single morning. I want you guys to join. I want to grow that community. We just passed 88 members. There's going to be a reference to that in today's video. I want to see that get to a couple hundred members so we can have some, a whole lot of fun over there. I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys join us. Like I said, if you're in CT2A, you'll get your first month free. Shoot me an email about that. Shoot me a comment. Shoot me a uh, inst uh, Discord message about that. I'm going to send an Instagram DM. Shoot me a DM about that, and we will get that free month for you. Cloric just donated the Devil's Bitcoin, which was $6.66. Thank you so much for the donation. Rock out, my dude. Uh, Knight said, I bought your course, but on the receipt, I got it from your name as Jeb McAfee. Why McAfee? Because, because Jared McAfee is my, is my name. Jared McAfee is my full name. That would be why. A lot of people don't believe me that my last name is McAfee, but like, my last name is McAfee. I'm not John McAfee. I'm Jeb McAfee. I have the same initials as the guy also. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> Are you live today because Taylor has the day off? No, Gary. The video was about 33 minutes of um, of uh, raw footage. She's working on it right now, in fact. So that'll be up in a little bit. Santiago said, I am down to join. Thank you so much, guys. The link is in the description down below. Jeb, the leverage is uh, X25 is not 25 times your profit. I'm not sure what you were saying there. Optical has a God complex. Okay. Um, no, excuse me. I'm sorry. It's the coffee, guys. MS1904 said, peace, I got a real good feeling. I got a, I got a real good feeling too, guys. I just want to say something, and let me just make sure. Um, I'm going to say one more thing. Um, Soul Rack, are you in the chat? Can you shoot me an um, a message real quick to tell me if you're still here, and I'm going to bring you on here in just a second. Before I do, though, because we're going to do that interview, and then we're going to do a little bit more analysis before we go, so keep watching. Before we do, I just want to say a couple of words about where this channel is going, where I'm going, because I want you guys to be along for the ride. Of course, I mean, I'm a YouTuber. I'm a content creator. That's what I do. That's my job. I trade, I invest, and I make videos. That's what I do um, many hours a day. And I'm really looking forward to this year, guys, because as I bought this new microphone, it's a Shure SM7B running into a Rodecaster Pro A6400 with the kit lens on it. I just spent about $3,000 on audio video equipment in the last couple of weeks, in the last couple of months. And I absolutely fell in love with cinematography. I don't know about you guys. I think it's awesome. If you guys know the P if you guys know who Peter McKinnon is, tell me in the chat over there with the one. Um, I was watching some of his videos. And I watched some videos by like, uh, I don't know, some of the great vloggers like Casey Neistat. Um, I see those videos and I'm like, I know exactly what I want to do with my life now. I got it. And, and that's the problem that a lot of people have is they either they think they have their life figured out, they think they know what they want to do, and they don't. I thought I was going into astrophysics two or three years ago. I thought I was going into aerospace engineering when I realized I didn't want to go to college for 12 years to do astrophysics. It was astrophysics, then it was aerospace engineering, 
And then out of the blue, I found a video on July 31st, 2017 on cryptocurrency and fell in love with that and YouTube. And now guys, I know what I'm doing. I'm continuing doing this. I love doing this content. I love Crypto Jeb. I love this channel to death. This will not stop for a very long time. Don't get me wrong, but I'm starting another channel also. And it's going to be awesome. It's going to be about travel. It's going to be about educational and this life advice stuff. And it's going to be about cameras. And I am going to have so much fun. And I want you guys to be along for that. So when that new channel starts, hopefully you guys will join me. I am really looking forward to this year, guys. I am really looking looking forward to this year. This is going to be a great year. I hope you guys feel the same way about your year. I am extremely, extremely excited. Dude, you can make a Twitter and control the market. <laughs> Carlos says I'm here. One, hey, the subscribe rate is overbought. Wow. CJ coin is pretty catchy though. can be used for subscriptions. That's true. I just sent you the link, Jeb. Let's check this out. Let's check this out. All righty. Bitcoin price source is Jerome Powell confirms uh, crypto's threat to the U.S. dollar. Let's see here. Mm, excuse me. Bitcoin surges after Powell announces, acknowledges Fed is working hard on crypto. It is well documented that China has tremendous ambitions in the, re in the realm of digital currency. Congressman Foster's concern about Beijing's ambition centers on the risks posed to the U.S. dollar status as the global reserve currency. That's been a concern for the market and for just geopolitics for a while is is the the is the United States dollar losing its hegemony either to something coming out of China or the eurozone or now as Bitcoin grows up the U, the uh, Bitcoin I can totally see something like this happening an otherwise dull testimony from Federal Reserve chairman got very interesting for Bitcoin's BTC USD spiked four percent I haven't pre-read this so um I haven't pre-read this so let me look how does ethereum look to you I'll tell you how ethereum looks to me I just bought five hundred dollars more of it last night that's how ethereum looks to me. Um, despite this, Powell was clear in the theoretical implications of Facebook's Libra as a game changer. It's, fair. it's quite obvious why Bitcoin rally was so aggressive in this instance. Okay. Fed Chairman uh, Jerome Powell just came out in favor of private transactions for digital currencies. Huge for blockchain-based gaming. Okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this article. It's due diligence and do some research on it on my own. I can't, I can't dedicate enough time right now in the middle of a stream to read into that a whole lot more. But I am going to be looking at that a lot more. You need a, a 3950X thread ripper and some slide rails for sponsorships. Yeah. It's all about finding out where you are. In 1991, I found out I was a mechanic. I loved it. Always have. I'm retired 11 years early, but I'll always be a mechanic. That's awesome. And guys, that's one of the things that I'm really, that's one of the things I'm really excited about is that I'm getting really good at trading crypto. I'm getting really good at making YouTube videos. And I'll tell you what, both of those are things that I can, I can always fall back on. And I'm going to be investing in real estate also this year. So you guys will be along for the ride on that. Even I, a Bitcoin maximalist, own some Ethereum. I own some Ethereum also. It's great. It's okay. DARPA created Bitcoin America. Would never ha would never let anyone touch their dominance. Maybe. Bitcoin, don't uh, Jeb, don't drink too much coffee. It stimulated your blood flow. Results in 10K plus Bitcoin. Well, let me go ahead and see. I'm going to be right back, guys. I'm going to go ahead and get this set up, and we're going to bring Solrack on. I'll be right back. Stay tuned. All right, guys, we're going to, we've got the headset on here so I can hear him. We're going to wait for him to join on in. Oh. Hey, how's it going? Hey, hey, how you doing, man? Can you guys hear him? Good, good. Oh, hang on. Good to talk to you. Good to talk to you. There we go. We got desktop audio on now. Get, guys, give me a one in the chat if you can hear everything all right. How are you doing, bud? Good, good. How are you? I am how's doing fantastic. I, it sounds good to me. I can hear you perfectly. I hope they can, too. They'll tell us here in just a second. Okay, awesome. Yeah. I'm in Santiago, Chile in the shopping mall so hopefully the signal on wi-fi is decent yeah you sound great yeah you're down in yeah you said you live in brazil right and you're down in chile right now 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm uh, traveling around, about to move to Argentina. About to move to Argentina. Dude, that's awesome. I've always wanted to visit down there, down in the Andes, and I, I want to go to the Atacama because I hear the night sky is beautiful down there. Oh. Oh, he dropped. Hey, you dropped. Hang on one second, guys. Technical difficulties. Sorry about this. One in the chat. Yeah, you guys can hear. I'm good. Let's get him back. Hey. Oop. Hey, there we go. Hello. Hey, you must have dropped. There we go. I was just saying, I've always go. wanted to go to the Atacama. How are you doing? Good, good. Here we good. go. Good. Good deal. Yeah, yeah. Well, you were telling me some of your story on the on um, Discord, and uh, I just wanted to hear a little bit more about that. Now that we're on stream, it's it's a it's really awesome. I want them to hear what you went through, if, if whatever you're whatever you're comfortable talking with. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you the the, the quick the quick version. Awesome. Because uh, it's it's pretty long, but but yeah, I'm not hiding anything, and I'm, I'm excited to okay. learn how to trade like a professional trader. And honestly, you given uh some of the best lessons and, and uh overviews of hundreds of hours of stuff that i've watched so. well geez thank you that's a really high praise i appreciate that we've, we've worked very hard on the channel so it's, it's i'm glad that i'm glad that means something totally totally so so the the story is pretty horrible until now like i'll, I'll start with this in 2017 i was broke completely yeah. flat broke me too <laughs> Yep, yep, and I had been broke for decades. I'm talking about like just a shitty yeah. life. Not not mm -hmm. just because I was broke, but I went through lots of trauma, horrible upbringing, yes, uh, you know, unsupportive family, lots of mm -hmm. stuff that goes on for decades. Mm -hmm. um, but I also had a lot of bad luck in my career, constantly getting laid off of jobs. So yeah. living off of my savings during the months that I didn't have work, getting a new job, making money, and then once again getting laid off almost never through you know fault of my own just, just yeah. bad choices yeah companies that i worked for after 15 16 17 years i ended up with nothing nothing to show for it uh because life in los angeles is expensive yeah uh, i never even got to travel much uh and at the end of all that uh, i was pretty much broke but i had 50 dollars to invest in monero during the, the 2017 bull run. Yeah. And I turned my $50 into $300. Wow. So, woohoo, 6X. Yeah. Good job, I, yeah. I, I literally lived off of that uh, $300. That's how broke I was. Jeez, man. Um, yeah, and then let's fast forward to 2018, mm -hmm. and uh, a family member passed away, left me a large sum of money as an inheritance. Rest um, in peace. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But uh, so, what do I do? Uh, well, for the for for two or three years before that, and even since 2011, I was aware of Bitcoin, but kind of just like as this toy or something that I never really paid much attention to. Yeah. Um, but by the time it was 2018, I was a total, you know, permeable for Bitcoin. Obviously, right. Mm -hmm. um, and I went ahead and invested a giant portion of that inheritance into into Bitcoin, mm -hmm. and and I won't you know tell you the amount, but it's, yeah. it was a pretty significant amount, you know, and enough yeah. enough that if I had just made a, a, a few moves a little bit better than I had done since back then, I could probably be a millionaire right now. Yeah. So it's really it's really sad what happened to me. And, and I'll tell you what happened. The, the first purchase I made was an over-the-counter purchase. Mm -hmm. So I got a, a you know a, a, a stack of bitcoins. Then the second purchase I made was another over-the-counter. But this time I wanted to, to buy some Ethereum, you know, because I wanted some Bitcoin. Yeah. I wanted some Ethereum. Yeah, you wanted. And then I one. wanted to, yeah. And then I wanted to trade some Ethereum into altcoins, you know, because I wanted to also coddle altcoins. Um, yeah, and yeah. again, this this was before last year's alt massacre. Right? Yeah, yeah. So this was j just to get the timeline down. This is in 2018. Yeah, this is uh, August. August. Okay, okay that's September 2018. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, but the moment I bought Ethereum, within one or two days, 
the giant crash uh, when when uh, uh, when ICO started getting a bad the giant crash in in August September of 2018. Yep. You can look at look you can look at it on. I've, the I've got the chart up for him right now. Yeah, it was around September 3rd. It just crashed like let's say probably about 20 percent. I'm guessing 45 percent. Yeah, take that, that back. That, yeah, that's on the log chart. Yeah, it, hours before that was my OTC purchase. Jeez, dude. And I lost seven Bitcoin like immediately. <laughs> And my luck never stopped going to shit from that yeah. moment. Like, yeah. but basically, I'll tell you that one of the huge mistakes I made, I went almost 100% into altcoins shortly after that. And the reason why was because I thought that pretty much altcoins will follow Bitcoin. And yeah. they had been, and they were pretty much yeah. doing that. Yeah, until but Bitcoin's going fast. down, sadly. Right. But now, fast forward a year. Yeah, uh, the the bull market that went from April to June, where mm -hmm. we hit fourteen thousand dollars. Yep, alt didn't match Bitcoin. Yeah, they really and, didn't. Uh, yeah, so I lost like eighty percent of all Jeez. of my investment. Dang man! So and I was like one of the people who bought Bitcoin in two thousand seventeen at nineteen thousand dollars, and I was so happy that I didn't do that. That I wasn't one of those guys. Yeah. But instead, you know, I didn't have anybody at the time adv advising me not yeah. to go so heavy into alt, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and so the same thing happened to me. I lost 80% of my wealth. Man, um, that's a story sad. that a lot of people, that's a, that's a story that a lot of people are going to be able to resonate with. I'm sure. I mean, I, when I started, I was flat broke also. I remember the first crypto I ever bought was 0.25 Litecoin at $41.02. <laughs> So I didn't really have any money to lose, but I lost a lot percentage-wise. Um, luckily, right. I didn't have a huge sum of money. I think that's one of the worst ways that you can get into crypto is having a big sum of money and not know what you're doing because that's a bad combination. But what I love about your story that you told me is that you've managed to take what happened to you, and I'm sure you've learned a lot of valuable lessons from it, and now you, now it sounds like you're like moving in the right direction, right? Just recently, but... The story gets even worse. Okay. Like during the time I was holding alt, I like missed all the significant pumps. Yeah. Like Binance Coin pumped 5x. Yeah. There was a time when Hollow Token pumped 3x mm -hmm. literally one day after I sold my Hollow Token. Jeez, um, man. Like the bad luck kept coming and coming. And, co and, then, and then what happened? Finally in June, I sold all my alts because yeah. Bitcoin hit 14 grand. Yeah. And I, I went full Bitcoin and I started learning BitMEX. I started oh, learning leverage yeah. trading. Yep. Um, so that was not good either. I did learn a lot. I was starting to study, but I, I didn't know enough. Mm -hmm. And the key thing, I'll tell you right now, the key thing out of 50 things yep. that I didn't uh, know well enough was about market structure and and basically the, the most important words that I can probably say in all of crypto to anybody listening right now is this, are these. The trend is your friend. Yes, yeah, guys, listen to him. He's so right. The trend is your friend until it ends. Right, until it ends. And and so unfortunately, I was doing a, a permalong. I call this a permalong. It's, yeah. it's actually a good strategy if you know the, the Bitcoin cycles. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I wanted a permalong that just would sit there a long position that would sit for like up to two years. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no problem. I still, uh, you know, I lost 80% of my money, but yeah. I still had enough money to make back a lot of money. Right. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm not, yeah. I, I, well, another lesson that everybody should learn is, is don't, like get shut out of the game <laughs> yeah don't yeah you got to know when to walk away you can't you can't lose everything because you have nothing to start with right right don't lose everything so I, at least i never got shut out of the game i never lost everything that's good I, I i never had my crypto hacked i never you know i have excellent security i'm a technical guy good um, good that's very important for crypto so right right so anyway back to the point is is that um, this permalong that I was holding, unfortunately, we were in that six month downtrend. Yeah. Right. And I was, you know, wanting to have an entry in the higher levels, like 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we, we fell to 7,000. Right. Yep. And there was the point, this is more bad luck, right at the point where we fell 
right a, a couple of days before the giant 40% candle on yeah. October 25th, I pulled out of the market because I was too scared. Jeez. And I and I missed that candle. And then I, I learned a lesson, which was don't get scared. Don't pull out. Stay in. Trust in Bitcoin. Bitcoin will rise. Bitcoin will not go to two thousand dollars. Yeah. Right. That's a whole other debate. You know, we could talk for hours about why that's true. But yeah, yeah. The the point the point is, I was too scared. Yeah. So then that... I went back in. I went all in back into Bitcoin, and guess what? Then we had that huge fall. The fall, the dump. Yeah. <laughs> After October. Yeah. And so I, I double lost and missed my game, and and the only part I missed was that giant candle <laughs> that's that's rough dude yeah that's one thing that bitcoin will do is it'll it'll be in a trend and every once in a while I'll just go okay we're gonna buck the trend we're gonna buck the trend we're gonna buck the trend but you never believe in that you never believe that that's actually a trend reversal like what we're seeing right now because you're so used to it not being a trend reversal you're so used to it being um just another pump in the middle of a downtrend right so that's my story from Losing seven Bitcoin on wow. an Ethereum over the counter trade within yeah. hours of making that trade to missing all of the pumps in the altcoins that I was holding just because I had been selling them and buying them at the wrong times. Yeah. To getting out of alts, all Bitcoin, then learning leverage trading, and then being in a downtrend trying to start my, my permanent long position. Yeah. And then getting too scared and missing the one candle, you know, that could have <laughs> Though they could have made something back, yeah. Right. It, and so uh, just the roughest, I'm probably the biggest loser in crypto that you can imagine, you know, short of people who got hacked and just lost everything. You know, it's right? funny. I completely disagree with you. I And the reason I completely disagree with you is because you lost a lot of money, but you learned a lot of lessons. And the last 15 years for me, 15 years ago, I was four, I realized. But the last 15 years for me have been shit, to be quite honest with you. It's been difficult. It's been hard. It's been fun. I mean, it's been great. Right. It's been good memories. But it's been very hard. I've been through a lot of the same things you've been through. And... I, I would I personally I'm not speaking for anyone but I personally wouldn't change any of it because I'm so blessed that now that that's in my past and I don't have to worry about it anymore that I'm I, I'm over the pain of it and I'm left with the lessons so hopefully that's what you can do with the losses that you made you've learned from it and you learn you know what to do what not to do and now you can use that to go and make back all of that money and even more yeah that's one one of the lines of thinking that kept me going and, and you know I'm pretty I've had a rough like 40 years right i'm about 40 yeah. years old yeah um just turned 41 actually um, oh happy birthday yeah thank you thank you and i've had a rough life and mm -hmm. luckily you know things are a lot better now yeah and i'm pretty immune to to trauma but there were a few yeah. days where i was just on the verge of a nervous breakdown I, yeah. but the one the one thought that kept me going forward all this time especially since July when I started learning how to trade properly. And, and I didn't even learn, you know, how to really be a good trader until the last couple of months. And, mm -hmm. and you're part of that, Jeb. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, but one of the thoughts that kept me going through this is that if I learn well enough, then all these losses are worth it. Exactly. Because I know enough now. Yeah. And not, not even by the next year, but I know enough now that over the next five years yeah. that I'll make back you there know, you go. four times what I've lost. Mm -hmm. I love and that you adjusted I've, your time horizon there also because it can take a long time, but it but it will happen if you keep moving in the right direction. Yeah, but you know I've already made back two bitcoins since Good. Uh, Chinese New Year. You know, wow. I'm pro I'm promoting myself that I called the the bottom on Chinese New Year. Yep. Uh, January 23rd, I said, in two days, it's going to be the bottom and it's going to go up. Mm -hmm. And I, I have that on my uh, Telegram channel. I have that in a few other chats. I called Good. the bottom by doing a five-year historical analysis on Chinese New Year. Yeah. And it always pumps shortly after, a few days after Chinese New Year. This year, it was like within one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, so, I'm looking at the chart right now. The viewers can't see it. But yeah, we pumped just on uh, January 26th was when that uh, yeah. three soldiers pattern started. Yeah, so I called that, and I made almost two Bitcoins since then. So I'm that know, wasn't that long back, ago. That's good. No, so I'm making back some money, and now I'm seeing that we are in a confirmed uptrend. We yeah. are about to enter the confirmed bull market yep. above ten ten thousand five hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. I was too scared to trade hard from uh, seven thousand, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> 
but yeah. uh, but I'm I'm ready to put in you know a heavy you know long position once again. Yep. But I think this time it, it's in an uptrend, which again that's the most important lesson here. The trend is your friend. The trend is your friend. Yeah. Absolutely. This time I'm gonna I'm gonna do my strategy again with an uptrend. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, I, I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm confident that and, along with other trading skills that uh, that I've learned and I've been studying eight hours a day, Excuse ten me. hours a day, um, watching videos for hours yeah. every day. Um, here, I'll give you another point. Okay. Here's this one point that comes from you, actually, Jeb. You you say this a lot more than anybody. Okay. But you you trace uh, the previous bull markets and you show that you know during a bull market, Bitcoin likes to to revert to the 21 exponential moving average, yeah. and it'll either bounce off of there or maybe fall a little bit below that on the daily chart yeah. and, and then go up. Um, mm-hmm. and, and just, just that little fact, that little, like, like, uh, I know it's call it? like a little tidbit. It's so, it's so simple, but it's so powerful, especially on the weekly chart, because we almost never go below that during a confirmed bull market. Yeah. So just a, an observation like that, I was totally clueless about. Yeah. And July, August of last year, yeah. uh, trend is your friend. Never mm-hmm. even consider that. Yeah, market structure. Thank market structure that. is hugely important. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, stuff like that. And that's, so, and, you know, that's one of the things that I try and do on the channel is that a lot of people, they either uh, analysts or YouTubers or other people, they try and look at 50 different indicators or some random niche indicator. But the thing is, a lot of the YouTubers that are doing that, they're doing that because some indicator that you've never heard of is going to get clicks because it's novel. I'm not doing that. I'm trying to bring attention to what I know works because I've seen it work for me. I've seen it work for other people. Everybody's looking at it, so it's obviously going to be powerful or everybody wouldn't be looking at it, and it has historical precedence. That's what we talk about in that video over in CT2A. The 20 EMA is a great example of that. Market structure, trend oh, is your totally. friend. All of that stuff falls into how to spot a winning indicator, which is what we talk about uh, talk about over there. And uh, regarding my book, uh, so yeah, I'm, you're I'm, writing a book. Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm writing the the teaser page for my book now. Good. And that's gonna, you know, kind of be a pre-sales form that mm-hmm. you know anyone who's interested can sign up and, okay. and get 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 the advance notice on when that's coming out. But the the title of the book is going to be called "How I Lost X Bitcoin" and X being a number I'm not going to reveal yet. But it's, okay. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty big number. Yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty, pretty sad story so far. Yeah. But uh, and how I'm making it back, the right. That's way. a great title. The, That's a great yeah, title. Thank you. Thank you. And the purpose of the book. This is. I'll give you the purpose of the book. This is a book that um, I would have given to myself a year ago. Exactly. Yep. And if I had read that book a year ago, I'd be a millionaire today. Yeah. But instead, I'm, I'm like. You know, eighty percent below That's, where I, where I started with. There you go. That's exactly um, what I try to do with the course and the YouTube videos. Is what what advice do I need when I'm newer to crypto? What 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 can I tell people that are newer to the space to get them to the point where they're consistently profitable? That's that's a great way of looking at it. Yeah. So this this book will be great for for you know anybody who's a beginner. Yeah. And, you know, even people who are intermediate. Yeah. Um. And so yeah, if there's uh you know. Uh, a potential to work together because you have yeah. a lot of beginners in your court. Absolutely. You know. Um, yeah. Hey, when yeah, it comes we'll out, you that. know, you shoot me a DM and we and we can we can work something out anyway. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I think it's going to help a lot of people. Sounds and, like it. And again, it it, it would have saved my ass. <laughs> yeah. If I and I'm not talking about by having a crystal ball and saying these are what the price. It's never about are that. Be. It's never about no, that. It's, it would be like here's the skills that exactly. You know, Exactly. And that's what people that some people come to my channel and they say, Jeb, what's the price target? Jeb, what's the trade? I'm, I'm not here to do your thinking for you. I'm here to teach you how to do your own thinking for yourself. That's something my father always said. Never let someone else do your thinking for you. Do your own thinking because at the end of the day, you have to sleep with yourself at night. You have to go to bed knowing either you made a good trade or you made a bad trade. Not Jeb made a good trade and you copied him. Did you make a good trade? Because if you did, you can learn what you did right. If you made a bad trade, you can learn what you did wrong. But if you don't understand the reasoning that led up to that trade in someone else's mind and you're just blindly copying them, what do you have to learn? And also, if they're wrong, you have nothing to gain. You don't even have a lesson to go off of. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's kind of like one of my quotes for trading is like yeah. okay if you if you make a a losing trade this is what you want to think about if you make a losing trade then there's two reasons why you made that trade either one you know bitcoin invalidated all the patterns yeah or, which happens or bitcoin, yeah. yeah or bitcoin invalidated you know a lot of historical precedent 
or a whale, you know, just dumped the yeah. market against you, which is fine. Or, or the other reason is that you lost trades because you're an idiot. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. You made a mistake. Yeah. Right. So you want to make sure it's the first reason. Then, then you can mm -hmm. feel good about it. But it, exactly. Yeah, then more, you can feel good about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because but more you, often than not, you know, it's not going to always do that. You're going to win more yeah. than you lose if you got good skills. If you do, yeah, and you got to have that intuition also. The, the, give me your. I want to know your opinion on that. We do have to go here in just a second, but um, I want your opinion on this. Um, what do you think about what I say about intuition? I want to hear your take on that because I think it's very, very important to have a historical understanding of the market based on your own experience, your wisdom, and your knowledge. Not necessarily just the information of what a candlestick means, but a feeling of what the market's going to do based off of training and wisdom and thousands of trades. I'm not talking about just emotions here. What do you think about that concept? I think that's totally key. I think um, that's not necessary for a beginner. So nobody should Absolutely. be Absolutely, no. Yeah. Nobody should be scared because they don't have that yet. Totally. Right? That's what I tell people. And I want to say this also. That's what I tell people is that you shouldn't trust that in the beginning. Because in the beginning, I mean, if you're trying to predict, if you're trying to predict which way the wind blows and you've never taken a single meteorolo meteorology class, you have no idea which way the wind's going to blow just off of your gut feeling. But if you've been doing it for 20 oh, yeah, years, but, you'll have a better feeling. Uh, Oh, totally. And anything you do, you know, if you In play anything, the piano, yeah. I'm, exactly. I, I'm a pianist, you know, I play the piano. And awesome. If you're a chef, if you're an athlete, you know, if you play football for, for exactly. three years, you know, yep. eventually you're going to have reflex exactly. actions that, that, you know, make you pro versus someone who had to think about it for a second. Exactly. Um, and, and now another good thing about all the, the money I lost is that pain teaches you <laughs> oh yeah that's why i said so, i wouldn't change any of my childhood it teaches you a lot oh yeah, yeah. it's the so best I teacher have some some potential to be a better trader than a lot of people exactly I, I learned exactly some heavy pain yeah and hey it's uh, not just it's not just what happened with your trading what happened in your life i mean we don't have to get into it on stream of course but what everything true. that led up to where you are today all the pain and the trauma you went through there are so many lessons on in that if you're comfortable going back and thinking about it because i think about like what happened throughout my life and growing up all the time because I'm detached from it. It's not traumatic anymore. But there was a lot of it. And I think about what, what, like what decision did I make here? Like I've, I've learned lessons about lying and morality and integrity and honesty and helping people in charity and so many things. Because like, like we just said, pain is one of the greatest teachers. You're going to learn so much from that because you have an emotional attachment to it. So when a lesson and emotion come together, you have the ability for it to stick because that's just how human psychology works. So... That's why I want to tell the viewers also is, hey, if you've been in the same position that you're in, make sure that you don't just write off those losses and, and just forget about them. Learn the lesson and then forget about them because there are a lot of lessons inside every mistake you ever made. Totally, totally. And, and that ties in with what you say too about, um, you know, you have a gut feeling, but a lot mm -hmm. of that, every indicator, every historical precedent, every YouTube video, every... There's so anything that's that's being seen by thousands of traders is an indicator. Exactly. And so even a exactly. YouTube video is an indicator. Exactly. If you have like if you have a million viewers in the future, hopefully mm -hmm. you do. Hopefully. And you say <laughs> you say, here's a trade, that's an indicator. It's the yeah. Jeb YouTube oh, it channel is. indicator. Yeah. And and yep. so any anything is gonna be a trigger for buyers and sellers. Exactly. So and that, that you'll get that with that gut instinct. Yep. You'll see, you, yep. you might you might see something in the chart, and you you might yep. smell something bad. Exactly, you smell. That's things. a good way to put it. Yeah, you might not even know why you feel that way. You just feel that way. And um, I was about to say something, I lost it. Anyway, yeah, go well, ahead. I was going to say the, the the market won't crash oh. because there was like a, a shooting star candlestick. No. Like the the market will crash with like fifty thousand traders. Saw That's that what I was just about to say. Did. Exactly. Yeah. the the market yeah. The market doesn't move because of technical analysis. It moves because people are respecting the technical analysis. It moves because of what the buyers and the sellers are doing. If they're all reacting to the twenty EMA and a bounce off of that, then it's important. If nobody cares all of a sudden about the twenty EMA, it has no value. That's why the right. that's why when people argue, oh, technical analysis is the only important analysis. Oh, fundamental analysis is the only thing that matters. You're both wrong because it both matters. It depends on what people are trading based off of. Right. Totally, it's completely totally. detached, actually, from technical and fundamental analysis. Is based fully on what the traders are doing. Oh, and I remember here. I, I'll leave you with this because I know you got to wrap this part up. Okay. But th this this is the the number one uh, 
well, maybe not the number one, but one of my favorite uh, thoughts about about trading. Yeah. And I want to like put this out there and I'm definitely going to put this in my book, but there's a statistic that says it's something like 99% of traders lose money or it's some, some ridiculously high percentage, yeah. right? 99% of traders lose money. And that's one of those statistics that always scared me from trading, always scared me from being an investor, always yeah. scared me from never like taking this kind of business seriously. Right. Um, and also having like negative, uh, you know, just negative perspective. Scares you from starting, yeah. Yeah, like my family was all negative, so I didn't. I wasn't mm -hmm. surrounded by positivity. Yep. Um. So all all that comes together. So, but let me let me turn it around. Yeah. The 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 quote should be rewritten as, you know, what percentage of traders who study like eight hours a day? Exactly. What exactly. percentage of them? I know where you're going with this. Yep. And, and I bet you nobody knows. Mm -hmm. I bet you there's no real statistic on exactly. that. But I bet you, I bet you it's like, like 10% or some really low number. Yeah. Yeah. Because the thing is, you got, a, you, take this YouTube channel, for example. We hit 1,000 subscribers about two months after I started the channel. 10,000 subscribers in July of 2018. It was about six or seven months after. I, I had to make a video every single day, literally every day for eight months before we got monetized, before I made a penny, a penny off of this channel. Right. We had to make right. a video, at, well, I had to make a video every single day. People quit too early. And I think you could probably agree with that with the situation you've been through, is that people, they start down some path and they quit too early. There's a great man that runs a, a massive consultancy agency, a cult, consulting agency named Sam Ovens. And I've quoted him many times saying this, and I'm going to keep doing it because it's a great quote. He said, the grass isn't greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it. So start watering the grass that is cryptocurrency and you're going to see fruit. You're going to see it actually starting to provide some kind of profit if you just keep working at it. If there are other people out there of average intelligence and they're just regular people making this work for themselves, why can't you do it? I've never understood the, oh, I'm not smart enough for that. Oh, I don't have enough time for that. If you want it, you'll get it. You just got to point yourself in that right direction and keep working until you have it. Totally, yeah. So people don't get scared of trading because it's hard. Exactly. And, and, and most traders, quote unquote, lose money. No, it's most like inexperienced. Most traders, traders make one trade, to lose it. money, and then they quit. That's why that statistics like that. Yeah, yeah. You got to put yourself in a different box. And exactly. That box is hard workers. Exactly. And then you're gonna win. Like I've Especially said, with Bitcoin, and Bitcoin really follows a lot of precedents and patterns. And exactly. It really, it really respects levels, and Bitcoin has whales behind it bitcoin mm -hmm. has whales like roger veer craig yeah. Wright, uh, uh gary silbert you know yep. tim draper Charlie these Lee. guys are not gonna let bitcoin fall below critical levels they're gonna yep. buy it back up mm -hmm. because it represents the future of humanity it yeah that's future of money yeah this is a big deal so, this isn't just some random new technology this is big guys yeah so so you can win trading Bitcoin, and Absolutely. I'm going to win back a lot of a Absolutely. Lot of that there you and go. I want to like publicize some of it and help you guys as well. Well, that's a very inspirational story. I hope you guys over in the chat got a great, got a lot of value out of that. That's that's awesome to hear. That I mean, I'm sorry you lost a lot of money, but at the same time, you probably gained at least that value back in the lessons you've learned in the next year or so. I want to keep up with your journey. It's probably going to be really, really great because you've learned what you did wrong. You've learned what what happened that you didn't do wrong and how to avoid that part of it. And hopefully, you've learned a lot of really good lessons. You said you've already made two Bitcoin. That's awesome. And I, I like like I said, guys sure. over in chat, listen to what he. He's saying okay just because he, he he had failure after failure after failure from either a mistake that he made or the market or unluck or whatever you want to call it there was so much that he just went through in the same way there's a lot of crap that i went through in my life but if you keep working at it guys it's easy it's not it's not easy it's simple the way you become successful is you multiply hard work by smart work by long work don't quit after a week because you're not working long Use your brain and don't go digging a ditch through the front yard thinking that's going to make you a millionaire and work hard. You're not going to get rich and you're not going to become successful at cryptocurrency looking at the market five minutes a day. You do those three things. Work hard, work smart, work long. You'll be successful in whatever you ever, whatever you could ever want. And I think you're living proof of that. So thank you so much for coming on. That that was that was a great story. I'd love to have you back on eventually. you got a lot of great thoughts. Yeah. And I definitely am interested in that book when that comes out. Definitely. You're welcome, Jeff. Totally. And thank you, too, for your uh, great courses and, and all your teachings and everything. 
Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That's that's um. I had I had a great time talking. I'm gonna go now. I have to, I'm on. I'm gonna be right back for just a second. We're gonna come in. We're gonna do some analysis. Wrap the stream out. Thank you so much, bud. Okay. Take care. Yep. Take take care, bud. Bye bye. Oh, I didn't mean to cut him off. <laughs> Let me go ahead and mute the desktop audio, guys. I will be right back, and then we're gonna wrap the stream out. Coming right back. Give me just one second. So guys, that was awesome. I really enjoyed that. Thank you so much for coming on, bud. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Give me a one in the chat if you found some motivation, some inspiration, maybe learn some lessons from that uh, little interview that we just had there. I'm really interested in hearing more about his story. I'm really interested in seeing that book when it comes out. My headphone messed up my hair. How about that? Guys, that was awesome. I hope you guys really enjoyed that. Remember, what I'm saying, this is the Coffee and Crypto live stream. This is what happens every single weekday over in the first cohort. If you want access to it, the link's in the description down below. We'll do it once a week, maybe every other week here. Excuse me. Um, but if you guys want access to this every single morning, you can join us over at the Coffee and Crypto live stream. By the way, you don't have to, you don't have to actually join uh, and watch it live. There is a VOD, so you guys can go back and watch the Coffee and Crypto live streams from two years ago. I mean, once we're once we're there, you know, you can go back and watch it anytime you want. So, guys, that is the um, that is the uh, that is the Coffee and Crypto live stream that is in the first cohort down below. Thank you so much for coming on. I I have a feeling you might still be watching. So, thank you, um, Solrak, your for your uh, your pseudonym for coming on. That was great. Like I said, anyway. Guys, let's do a little bit more analysis, and we're going to wrap it up in just a little while. Can you buy eggs with bacon? Um, if you give some dude a Bitcoin, if can you buy eggs with bacon? Let me just re let me just restart my brain here for a second. Can you buy eggs with Bitcoin? I was thinking about eggs and bacon, guys. I didn't have breakfast, and I'm regretting it. My truck's in the shop, so I couldn't go to the grocery store, and there's like nothing to eat here. I have like a cold Jimmy Dean biscuit right here that I didn't even finish eating because I'm so hungry. My coffee's cold, guys. Send me, keep me in your thoughts and prayers. No. Um, if you gave someone one Bitcoin, they would probably give you an egg. I know I would trade an egg for a Bitcoin. Um, anyway, like I said, let's go ahead and jump back on into a little bit more analysis before we go. There are a few things I want to talk about. First and foremost, one of the things we talked about was altcoins and how they were not necessarily following Bitcoin back then. One of the great differences between this market that we're in right now and the market that we saw back then um, in early 2019 during this bull market is that, yeah, a lot of the times the markets, excuse me, a lot of times the market did not... Uh, the, the altcoins weren't following the market. And a big reason for that was, well, you know, it's it's hard to pinpoint the reason for that, actually. But what I want to point out to you guys is that the altcoins are following Bitcoin this time. And that's a big deal. Because like I said, when people are excited about cryptocurrency, when people are excited about the space, when they're looking forward to the future, what they do is they go and they invest in altcoins also. Because oftentimes, the altcoins follow Bitcoin, and they mirror Bitcoin, and they go farther than Bitcoin. Ethereum, which I bought last night, is already up like 10% from when I bought $500 worth of it last night. I'm going to be buying a lot more Ethereum here over the next couple of months. I want to get back into uh, Litecoin. Now that a bull market's starting, I'm going to be getting back into altcoins for the first time in over a year. I've been mo almost totally in um, in Bitcoin for a long time because the altcoins just don't perform very well. You will mail me an egg. I will totally cook that egg up and eat it on stream if you mail me an egg. But you gotta find my you got to find my address. Please don't dox me. Thank you for all your input, Jeb. Thank you so much. 
Woman over. <laughs> when looking at the long-term time table, you should look at BLX. Boom, there we go. It's right there. <laughs> um, empty egg carton. Yeah, you just sent me an empty egg carton. Guys, I love doing these live streams. Give me a give me a one in the chat if you guys are enjoying the stream. Give me a like if you guys are enjoying the stream also. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I know I say it a lot, but it really does just mean something to me when you guys join the stream and watch. It's really cool being in, being able to interact with you guys one-on-one -on -one like this. It feels like I'm talking directly to an old friend. I don't ever feel like I'm doing work here. I mean, sometimes when I've like had no sleep and, you know, it's a crazy night last night, but then sometimes it does. But for the most part... It always feels great getting on camera here and talking to you guys, making the videos, doing live streams. It's always something that I've wanted to do ever since middle school. I remember I used to watch uh, Minecraft back in like 2011 by a guy named Etho. I was with him when he had 60k subs. He has 3 million now. And he did a subscriber special for like hitting 50,000 subscribers or 10,000 subscribers or whatever. I was like, mm, I want to do that one day. That was almost 10 years ago. You guys were laughing yesterday when I said 10 years ago I wanted this. I mean nearly 10 years ago I wanted this. This is not something that's happened overnight. I've been wanting to do YouTube for a very long time. I've been wanting to make enough money to get myself out of the hole that I was in for a very long time. I've been wanting to be successful and knowledgeable and able to teach people for a long time. Guys, what you want today is going to structure what you have 10 years from now. If you want a big house today, work on it in 10 years from now, you might have it. If you want a great relationship today, Work on it and, and you might get it. I'm not necessarily saying the law of attraction is real. Um, it's, it's not a fundamental force of nature or anything, but where you put your attention is generally where you're going to go. If you're spending 12 hours a day working on a YouTube channel like I do lately, then you're probably going to be propelled forward on that YouTube channel. So guys, whatever it is you want, if it's charity, which is a big thing for me, I want to do a lot of charitable stuff this year, especially with the new channel. If it's charity and you want to give hundreds of thousands of dollars away to charity like I do, Point yourself in that direction. It's what I've always wanted. It's what's going to happen. I know that now. You know, where you put your focus is where you're going to go. And if your focus is on bettering yourself in cryptocurrency and working your ass off, even if you lost a lot of Bitcoin like our friend did, I don't care. I don't, I mean, I, I care, but don't come to me and say, oh, I can't do this because you're wrong. If someone who is very similar to you can do it, you can do it. Okay, look. I'm not saying that if you're four feet tall, you're going to be in the NBA. I'm not saying that you're going to, as I've said sometimes, set up an outpost and, uh, and, and a homestead on the surface of the sun. I'm not saying that you're going to like literally just like jump to the moon. Okay, there's some things that we can't do. Most things that have been done can be replicated by you, though. Whatever you want has probably been done before. And if it's been done before, then that means it can be done again. Please don't forget that. Great video so far. Nice channel. Thank you, guys. If you guys are enjoying the stream and you're not already subscribed, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Hit that subscribe button. We make daily cryptocurrency videos. You're a legend, Jeb. Keep up the awesome. Thank you so much, Kelvin. I appreciate it. Um, this is his job. He supports himself through cryptocurrency. He's 19 years old. Yes, that's, uh, that's, that's, my, that's my... I had a bunch of friends come over from our microchurch last night, our little uh, Bible group. And uh, none of them have been in my house before. And th guys, this is funny. One of the leader, his name's Tim. He walks in. He's probably about 25. He's married. He walks into my house and he goes, this is a nice house. Somebody wife this man pronto. And I laughed so hard. That was hilarious. Long-term BTC, TA, upside targets in two years. Bitcoin will probably be worth between fifty dollars and $100,000 in two years. Too much noise about on YouTube, but I do listen to your podcast. Thank you so much. UN-sponsored charities are frauds. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going through any of the current charities. I'm making my own, like the entire organization from scratch so that I know that it's been built with the right DNA. That's what I'm doing. I'm not talking about donating money to some organization. I'm talking about building it myself because I know my heart's in the right place, and I know that if a charitable cause has the heart of the person who founded it in the right place, it's going to do good things. If he's married, the house belongs to the woman. Well, I pay the bills, so. <laughs> wife this man. That was so funny. He just walks in and goes, wipe. somebody wife this man. <laughs> oh, man. Guys, here's what I'm going to do. We're going to kick back. This is, the, this is the section of the video where we kick back. Because I'm tired and I've been streaming for an hour and a half. So we're going to kick back a little bit, all right? Get to lean back in my chair. Get to talk to you guys real intimate here before we wrap the stream out. 
Here's what I want to say. First things first, let's get this stuff out of the way. CT2A is going to be going on sale relatively soon once again. It'll be the last time that sale goes up until it'll be the last time the sale happens at that price point. So guys, if you want to get into CT2A, you can join today if you want, but there will be a sale on Valentine's Day and that'll run for a few days. First cohort is where the Coffee and Crypto live streams are housed. If you want access to this stream every single morning, join us with the link in the description down below. You'll get your first month free if you join CT2A first. Okay, so that's that. If you want access to these live streams every morning, join us. Now, for what I actually really want to talk about, is I want to talk about you and me. I want to talk about our relationship here. I want to talk about what we have here, okay? I want to talk about, I want to talk about my love for you my viewer. I want to talk about you because you're awesome. And uh, the thing is, I want to bring you on a journey. And I'm getting really geared up for this journey right now, both literally and metaphorically, as far as camera and video gear, as well as mentally, financially, lifestyle-y. I'm getting geared up for a journey. I'm getting geared up for an adventure. And what we're doing is we're starting a new YouTube channel. And that's going to happen in about six months or so. But in that time, we're going to be learning everything that we can about cinematography, about audio, about visuals, about camera gear, about locations, about planning high-quality cinematic videos that inspire people, that show off um, charitable organizations that deserve it, show off charitable causes, guys. Have you ever seen the channel Peter McKinnon? Um, maybe Gary Vee, Grant Cardone. I want to talk about business, lifestyle. I want to talk about cameras. I want to talk about travel. And I want to bring you guys along for the ride. I'm really excited. This new channel is going to be awesome. Like I said earlier, this is not going to impact this channel at all. This channel is going to continue going exactly the way it is, except some days we might be shooting from like uh, in front of a mountain rather than in front of a piano. So that's one thing that might change. But in general, this channel is going to keep going exactly the same way that it is. But I'm really excited about that. And I cannot wait. If you guys want to help with that, joining ct 2 the first cohort helps because this new channel we're going for we're going for broke as far as production value is concerned i'm talking tens of thousands of dollars worth of camera equipment thousands of dollars of travel expenses we're probably going to be hiring some new people i'm going to have a new office space and a studio it's going to be great we're going for broke it's going to be amazing and uh guys i, I just can't wait i really can't wait this is going to be a great year i'm really really excited for it and you know i'm 19 i've only been working on youtube for a little while um, I've been a, con I've been a full-time content creator for about a year and a half now. Let me move this. And, uh, it, it was always a dream of mine, but now guys, it's, it's, let's just, let me, let me show you something. Let me tell you something. Whenever you want something bad enough, you will find a way to get it. If you want it bad enough, you will figure out how to get that thing that you want. For me, it was doing YouTube professionally. For you, it might be being an athlete. For you, it might be excelling in your job, maybe being the top salesperson in your company. Maybe it's having an amazing relationship with a wife and kids or a husband and kids. Whatever it is, you put your mind to it. You can do it. That's like I said, one of the greatest pieces of advice my father ever gave me was if you want something bad enough, you can have it. You just got to put your mind to it. And that is one of the greatest pieces of advice that I want to pass on to you guys is that if you want something, there is no reason that you can't have it. If you want to excel at cryptocurrency, there are thousands of people who have gone before you who have done just that in probably a, search, a, a situation exactly like yours. But let me tell you something. For every one person that was successful, 10 people weren't because most people aren't willing to put in the work. You can have whatever you want, but you're going to have to work your butt off for it. It's simple. You know, that's the thing. Success is simple, but it's not easy because it's hard to work hard. But it's simple to figure out what work you need to do. It really isn't that difficult to do that part. Get that part down, then worry about the hard work. Guys, if you want something, you can have it. Just work for it. I, I want to see you guys' dreams come true. I want you guys to do whatever it is you want to do in your life. I want you guys to be successful because I know not success. What's the antonym to success? I know failure. I know success. I know both of them. And believe me, you can live a life of failure. You can live a life of success. I've lived both of them. I would much rather be living in a life of success personally. So... Guys, that's that. I hope you guys did enjoy the live stream today. I hope you guys did enjoy the interview that we did. And I hope you guys did enjoy the analysis. Remember, you can go back and scrub through all of the analysis. We did a lot of analysis here today. I hope you guys really enjoyed. Remember, these are the Coffee and Crypto live streams. If you want access to these, the link is in the description down below. And also remember to join the first cohort um, to get that and CT2A, which is linked down below as well. Guys, I have a lot of work I have to do because I'm working on the CT2A update. I'll probably be working for the next eight hours straight. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, guys. I really don't want to go ahead and leave you because I love these live streams, but I am going to have to. So anyway, guys, that is going to have to wrap it out for the stream. I do want to first thank each and every single last one of you seriously from the bottom of my heart for watching as always. It means a lot to me. And I'll see you guys in the next video.
Peace.